close-up is brought to you by the Kia Sorento R. Redefining the power of Kia. We've seen all these trials in the States with driverless cars. You know, you hop in the car and the sensors, the GPS, the computers, all that fancy stuff does the rest. It is the future, apparently. Not for some of us, I'd hasten to add, the driving experience is why many of us have cars. But you know eventually it's going to come. But the States, almost certainly, but here, is it likely? Matt Chisholm got behind the wheel. Well, then again, for this story, he shouldn't have needed to. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Device destination off. Instead of driving your car, having your car drive you. Your morning commute could be a far more relaxing experience. Well, it's no longer the stuff of far-fetched sci-fi movies. Driverless cars are now legit. It's road legal to uh, operate autonomous vehicles in certain states in the US. It could be up for grabs sometime soon. I would say within 10 years. So the old look ma, no hands, or the drunk driver's terribly inappropriate. No worries, the car knows the way home. is no longer a matter of if, but when. What do you think the benefits would be? I think there's a lot in safety of people, with all the casualties and injuries on the road. A lot of accidents and things are often caused by human error somewhere along the way. So if you've got a computer that's controlling that, we might be able to reevaluate uh, safety standards. There is efficiency of the road so that vehicles could drive faster, more closely packed. It's not dependent on the state of the driver. You could be driven to work by your computer-controlled car. Like you can on a bus or a train. There's a revolution. And forget about expensive parking. You can send your wagon home after you've reached the office. And then when you're ready, you just maybe use your smartphone and say, I'm ready, click a button. It comes to pick you up, and you're off, and you join the queue of other autonomous vehicles. And maybe they'll give us pedestrians a chance to take back the streets by simply walking in front of them, because they'll surely be programmed to stop. <laughs> yep, some of us aren't so keen on cars, driverless or not. Here's urban design writer Patrick Reynolds. They almost certainly will, first of all, lead to a whole lot of unemployed taxi drivers. Instead, you'll have a computer. Now, we all know how wonderful they are. <laughs> so you'll be, have Google Maps will be driving you around and taking you to um, Tauranga when you meant to go to Hamilton. If um, our driverless cars stop functioning, we may not have the same understanding of how the car works, so we wouldn't have an idea about how to fix it. Wouldn't we just do what we normally do in the office, turn the computer off, turn the computer on? Quite possibly, yeah. We'd probably sit back and wait for one of the experts to come along and fix it for us. If one vehicle shuts down, will our city be gridlocked by these computer-run cars that don't know what to do next? I don't think so. I think that would be one of... An one of the early questions they would answer when in developing a system. It's hardly surprising the US military are into this, boots and all. They don't want to lose lives in the battlefield, so they'll do anything to push the drones. More surprising, however, is that Google, the outfit that's brought us Street View, is also throwing millions at it. They're licensing their technology. They want it in the cars in the next uh, eight years. Some of this autonomous technology is already being used in high-end cars. Things like autonomous cruise control, so it can just stay behind the, the vehicle in front autonomously. But putting it all together to deal with the uncertainty on our roads is quite a challenge. There are the sensors that have to perceive the environment to know where the other vehicles are, how far away they are, where a car is in the world using such things as GPS. Uh, and also for other items in the environment, like pedestrians. And there's also the intelligence, the software, that has to interpret all of this information and then has to filter out the meaningful information, like a human does in a split second. And when the car manufacturers eventually nail it, and they will, will we humans, we Kiwis who love to drive, want to give up the steering wheel? For many other people, you know, driving itself is actually a pleasurable experience. You know, for them, it's not just about uh, you know, getting to the destination, it's actually how you get there. So I think for those people, uh, driverless cars might not be quite such a positive thing. I think because people like autonomous things. I think the younger generation are growing up with it and they'll be upset if other things weren't happening as quickly. And so I think autonomous vehicles is just one of those things. Do you think people will sit around in years to come and go, geez, can't believe people used to drive their own cars? Yeah, I think so. That would probably, well, I, my uh, vision of the future would be where everything, all the vehicles are autonomous, etc. And to drive like you traditionally would, you'd be going on a racetrack or something.
it would be a closed scenario. Uh, 